seats uh, are just turned up, and I've got to be honest, I'm not overly uh, impressed with them. So, a bit gutted at the moment. Um, to start off with, they need a bloody good clean. They are filthy dirty, um, and there's quite a few wear marks on them. Might come out once, uh, well I don't think it's going to come out, um, but I mean it might look better once they've been treated with like a leather, um, a leather sort of care product. Um, and they might be more saveable than my old ones where I'll show you the marks on them. Maybe a case of clean them, treat them with a leather conditioner and then uh, go and chat to trim shops again. But uh, it looks like it's going to be additional expense to again get the seats looking reasonable so anyway i'll show you around the seats and then i'm going to go and get some cleaning products and some conditioning products for the leather to see what i can do with it i didn't buy those just in case the seats were that bad that i was going to send them back um how bad are they they're right borderline on whether to send them back or not so i'm going to attempt to clean them and condition them and then maybe make a decision on whether they just phone them up and say look they're really not good enough for what i want um you can have them back so anyway, i'll show you around the seats all right so uh, you have to excuse the lighting i can't really move the seats so the left hand seat doesn't really look too bad there's a bit of a mark there but I think that's where the seat was kind of tilted forwards. Um, so that might come out. But the driver's side, as you can see, there's quite a lot there. And there's a couple of lines down there and down there. But there, if you can see, I can't move the seat. There you can see there's quite sort of severe wear marks. I don't know if that can be recolored. And um, anything done with it we'll just have to see if i say first we'll give them a good clean and um give them a treatment with some leather stuff some leather conditioner and see what it comes out like so yeah right so um i'm gonna pop out and get some cleaning products and some leather conditioner see what i can do with them um so uh i'll be back with you shortly and um we'll see how well they clean up okay see you in a little while uh right okay um yeah quick change of plan um i've decided because the seats are electric and you can't move back wrestling around um I decided it's going to be easier to clean them once they're in the car. So what we're going to do now is we're going to put them in the car, and then we're going to clean them and treat them with a sort of leather conditioner, leather preserver. So no more ado. Let's get on with fitting the seats. Okay, first problem. <laughs> Something other people aren't going to have a problem with. To get the seat right back, to get the bolts out, I had to remove my subwoofer from behind the seat. Uh, you see, because you've got there, you've got to take these two covers off. Oh, the one not on that side to get them bolts. So you can see the bolt there. And so it's got that focused on it. But you've got to get them bolts out. And you've got to get this plastic cover off. The seat wouldn't slide far enough back with the subwoofer behind it. Right, so the first thing is to get that unclipped so i think we need a screwdriver okay <coughs> now then uh let's see how this unclips i believe from the video i watched it just sort of moves forwards oh well, there we go that was nice and easy right so that's that cover off I'm sure there's supposed to be a cover on this one, but he's got these two bolts here that we've now got to come out. Now these are the um, hexagon, six-sided hexagon bolts 
so I had to buy a special socket for that. Now I got that off of eBay. I'm not really going to bother with the um, link for that because if you just put in six-sided hexagon 10 mil, 10 mil six-sided hexagon socket, it just brings up hundreds of the damn things. So you just take your pick on that front, really. So let's go and get the ratchet and get these two bolts out. Okay. Okay, that's the two front ones out. Now what we've got to do is move the seat forwards, get the two rear ones out. And because I haven't got a lot of slack on the cable on my um, subwoofer, <laughs> that's probably going to get in the way. All right, so we've got the subwoofer balanced on the edge of the car there, which I'm going to sort of keep my knee wedged against whilst we undo these two rear bolts. One there, one there. Right, and now we're just going to disconnect the battery uh, because now the seat's unbolted. We've got to unplug all the electrics out. I don't think I'm going to have a problem with the airbag warning light on mine because it's the early car and I've only got airbags on the dash and in the steering wheel. But I'm still going to disconnect it on, it'll be on the safe side. And of course it's a good idea when you're mucking around with all the plugs underneath the seats that the, the power's off so there's no chance of shorting anything out as well. So we'll disconnect the battery, then we'll tip the seat up and have a look at the plugs. I've tilted the seat completely back. Kind of awkward here, I haven't got a lot of room to get the camera in. And the seat, I've got one hand <coughs> holding the seat up, obviously. There's the plug that I've got to disconnect. So I'm going to need both my hands to disconnect that. Um, because obviously I've got to hold the seat up with one hand and try and unplug it with the other hand. So I'll try and wedge the seat up with my leg. And undo the plug so unfortunately i'm going to have to put the camera down while i try and unplug it that wasn't too bad uh what you've got here i can get that hold on just get me twist that around there is you've got this kind of tower bit here i can't get my hand on it to hold it as well uh, what you've got here that wasn't too bad to unplug what you've got here is this kind of piece here that pushes in and out. Difficult to do with one hand. Just let me pull it back out again. You pull that out and the whole plug releases itself. And it's about as clear as I can get that with there. I'll just show you again. That's just on that side. Uh, there. You just pull that out, push that in like that. And it unplugs. So that is the passenger seat all disconnected. So now before the passenger seat goes back in, we've just got to Unbolt the seat belt mounting and bolt it onto the new seat. So we'll do that, then we'll put the new seat in. Now we've just got to get the leather seat back in. So uh, it should be pretty much the reverse getting the other one out. The tricky thing is the plug on my old seat just hangs down. The plug on the leather seat is actually on a plastic clip on the bottom of the seat, so it might be a little more tricky to plug in but we'll see it might just be a little bit of juggling around we're halfway there which reminds me of a song a leather seat in the passenger side and my old tatty seat in the driver's side can't do much about the sun unfortunately because obviously the car's sitting on the drive and I can't change the position of the driveway, and I can't change the position of the sun. So, let's get on now and do the driver's seat, which essentially should be exactly the same as the passenger seat. Okay, that's the driver's seat back in. Uh, 
pretty much the same routine as the passenger seat. There is a lead you've got to unplug on the seatbelt um, buckle. Well, I had to change the buckles over because they weren't on the other seats. So uh, all I've got to do now is um, put the subwoofer back in because I did realise that that actually unplugs after I struggled to try and move it out of the way on the lead. So I've got to put that back in, reconnect the battery, reset my clock, reset my radio, uh, reset all the other shit that every affects when you disconnect the battery. Then we can um, go get the cleaning gear and go and get the uh, leather conditioning stuff and start cleaning them up. I'll just show you those bad spots on the driver's seat before I carry on with that. On the driver's seat there's a couple of marks there that hopefully they will clean and again there's a couple of marks there that hopefully will clean but um, you've got a bit of a bit of wear in here um, so it's that one but the bit that really this is what really disappointed me is that bit there so I'm hoping if I go to a leather guy they might be able to do something with that and you've got these couple of I don't know if you can really see them there you've got these couple of scar lines sort of running up and down there so we'll see something see what we can get done with those but for the moment uh, I'm gonna get it back together I'm gonna go and get the stuff to clean them and condition them so, That'll be a bit more fun and hopefully a bit easier now they're in the car. But we have bigger fish to fry soon because I've managed to get my hands on a full leather dash. So that's on its way. That should be here in a few days. We're not going to fit that though until Clive is back off of his holiday because two, it's, that's going to be a two-person job, especially if we're going to film it because as you can see we're filming the seats. It's difficult, you've got to find places to prop the camera up and mount the camera so you can see what's going on and that. Um, when there's two of you, one can hold the camera and get a close-up shot on something while the other one's actually doing the job. So we're going to do the dash when Clive comes back. So um, I'll start the hunt for like door trims and the centre console parts uh, in the meantime and bring that to you obviously as and when but don't go away because I'm going to go and get the cleaning stuff now and we'll start cleaning the seats up and then we'll do like a four and after to um, see what the difference looks like so I'll see you in a minute I'm just going to go and get the cleaning stuff okay so we've now got the uh, leather cleaner and we've got the leather conditioner so let's start giving the seats a clean up and giving them a bit of conditioning, see what they look like. So we'll get on with that now. These are the two um, cleaners that I've bought to use. Liquid leather. Um, I don't know what they're like, they're just a uh, basic brand that I bought to try out, see how we get on. So, no more ado, let's get to it. Excuse the weird camera angle, but I think that's about the best I could get. So, to start off with, Let's get some of the dodgy looking rubber gloves on. Try and protect your hands from these cleaners and stuff. Now then, it says wipe on the cloth. There. This one is a, I know you can't tell, this one's a damp cloth for taking off, and this one's a cloth for putting on. So, Start with our <coughs> intensive cleaner. See how we get on. Now it says sort of work in, but don't scrub. So we'll put some of this on. Hope you can hear me clearly from there because the camera's on the other side of the car, but it normally works. Put that down somewhere where it's not going to cause a problem. Okay, yeah, we'll start with the headrests. So it says work, rub in, but don't scrub. So we'll see how that goes. Right, unfortunately, a bit of shit on there. This is the worst bit of the seat that's worrying me. Is this bit here?
But what I have managed to um, find, which might be useful, um, the company that actually do all the interiors for Car SOS, you know, the old Buzz or Fuzz, whatever his name is, Fuzz Town End, Townsend, and um, the other dudes. I don't know what his name is, the other guy, he's a Tim something I think. Um, anyway, the company they use up in Birmingham, I managed to find their website and they actually do leather dye to the car interior. So, and they've actually got graphite grey listed and if they haven't got the colour for your car listed, if you send them a bit of trim, um, they will try and match it. They also, in the kit, they send a couple of tints, so obviously if your lever has discoloured over the years, you can tint it to match. So what I thought I might do before bringing in a professional, I might actually try a few small levers. They do, uh, like a repair paste as well for leather. So what I thought I might do, oh, this stuff pongs, is, um, excuse me, <coughs> what I thought I might do is get some of that and just try maybe on a small area myself and see what it comes out like. See how we get on. So now I'm going to do this. Obviously, the driver's seat is the worst of the two seats, as always. But we'll give it a good scrub. Now they say leave this for five minutes. So we will do. Just that. <clears throat> so we'll now leave that for five minutes and then you wipe it off with a wet cloth. I'll just uh, put it back on that. So come back in five minutes. Go put the kettle on, have a cup of coffee, do whatever, and then come back in five minutes. Put the magic of video. That was the five minutes. I know, but it didn't seem like that long, did it? Right, so I've got a damp cloth now. And what we do now is just wipe it down. Doesn't seem to be a lot of dirt coming off. So all I can say is either that cleaning stuff is useless or the seats aren't quite as dirty as I thought they were. It's this panel here that really worries me, but we'll just have to lay it by here and see how it goes. <clears throat> So, let that dry off and then do the conditioning. Okay, so, obviously <coughs> I'm going to do the same on the um, passenger seat now. But I'm sure you don't want to watch me do that as you've just sat and watched me do this one. But basically it's the same. As I say, that is not really... Um, come out overly dirty, so maybe the seats aren't as bad as I first thought. Welcome back again, 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 again. So now we're on to, you can see that, we're on, ah, twist my arm around backwards. We're on to the conditioning, giving the seat about half an hour for the pair of them to dry out. And um, now you can put the conditioner on. Right, so what I've got here, these are the pads that I use. I get these off of eBay. Um, I know you get a bag of them for you get a bag of about 20 for a couple of quid. 
off of eBay. I use them for uh, polishing the car. And I'm going to use one to apply the conditioner. So you uh, you work it in, and then and then uh, buff it up with a, a dry cloth. So no more ado. Let's give it a condition. They say if your seats haven't been conditioned for a long time, then uh, do it, do a couple of applications over a few days so obviously I probably will do that so off we go now this is probably the more enjoyable bit because this is more like your relaxed Sunday afternoon cleaning routine oh come on you'll clean your car thoroughly on a Sunday don't you really Okay, then maybe you don't. Right, so uh, this is straightforward enough. Let's do the work it in down there. And there. There we go. Okay. I was really tempted. There was on eBay, there was a leather a conditioner who was actually leather scented as well so that you get that nice leather smell in your car well I mean that's coming up as you can see it's not really looking overly dirty so what have we done with the lid oh, up there so um, you know maybe it's just me I don't know right so next stage to take a dry cloth, not damp this time, and yeah, it feels sticky and slimy. Buff it up. You just take the excess, any excess material off, and just really, I didn't do down the side there, did I? I'll tell you what I have noticed, actually, and I'm pretty sure it's not me being paranoid, but if you look at the backs and the side panels, these back panels are sided, I don't think they're leather. I think they're leatherette. I think Porsche only give you the front panels of the seats in leather. Tight fisted dips. But what can you do? <clears throat> right. Of course, the brave thing is, once you've done all of this, <laughs> do you sit on them in your decent clothes and get all this what feels greasy and slimy all over your clothes right I'm going to go and do the left hand seat and I'll get back with you in a minute to um, see how we're doing don't go away <laughs> right that's the left hand seat done so off with the rubber gloves chuck them over there and oh just left loads of talcum powder dust over the seat there but they don't feel sticky or slimy that's good no, so far so good uh, I will just bring you up there we go Whew. Right, well that's it, there you go, it's the seat's cleaned and conditioned. So, I suppose now you're going to want to see before and after pictures, aren't you? Photos to see what the difference is. Okay, if you must, I suppose we must. Just so, here's your before and after pictures. There's before. And this is from the left hand view of the car. And now the after shots. Here's the car now with the leather seats in it. There we go. I know, I know, just teasing. You want to see the actual seats, not the seat covers. All right, one moment and we'll do it for you.
right, there you go. That's the after shots of the seats in the car. You can see that bit of damage to that bolster on the driver's seat there. But as I say, we will try and deal with that. But there are the seats with the level ones in. And a view from the passenger side. So the first step of rebuilding the car interior, grey leather seats, which wasn't originally the intention, remember. It's just that they happen to come up at a good price. There you go. Right, well that's the leather seats in and cleaned and conditioned and done. And the before and the after shots for you. And that's the first stage of the project of rebuilding the interior. Uh, I hope you found it interesting. Um, and I hope you found it helpful if ever you want to change your seats yourself. Um, so the next stage is we got the dash coming, which was again, that was a spot of luck. So um, that should be here soon. I'll give you a run over that when it turns up so we can see that. Then it'll be door panels, centre console, gear change and see how it comes along and all the bits. So I'll keep you updated on each bit as we do it and the fore and after pictures of as we do it. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching as always. Please subscribe, please share please hit the like button. Um, I'll try and remember to put all the links to where I got the various bits and pieces. So the seats came from a company called Status Porsche. Um, I'll put their contact details out. The dash is coming from Status Porsche as well. Um, so I'll put their details in the comments box down, uh, in the description box down below. And I'll put the link to where I got the uh, pads, the cleaning pads that I use, and the cleaner and conditioner for you. So, uh, yeah, thanks for watching, and we'll see you again in the next video. Bye.